Okay, so uh, I think an example will make this more clearer and then you can ask questions. Um, so it's a very famous example where we have two prisoners, A and B, and each has two choices. So, uh, so either they can co uh, cooperate or they can differ. Cooperate as in uh, they uh, cooperate as in they don't get close. Let's say they don't disclose to the police that the other guy did the crime, and differ means they just tell the police that the other guy uh, did this crime. So uh, we usually represent simple games by uh, payoff matrices. So draw the one for this game here. Uh, so let's say we represent A's choices by rows and B's choices by columns. So So, so if both of them uh, cooperate, so both of them decide that we won't expose the other guy, then each of them gets only one year in prison. So, uh, so in all of these, the uh, left, you know, all of these tuples that I will write in this uh, four spaces, the left side represents A's payoff and the right number represents B's payoff. So, uh, if A cooperates and uh, so uh, actually, so actually, this should be minus one because don't want like people don't want to get jailed. So this is minus one and minus one payoff. Uh, so if A decides to uh, cooperate and B decides, so A gets three years in prison. So his payoff is minus three, and uh, B's, B's payoff is just zero. He's just set free. Uh, if they, B cooperates and A uh, defects, then A is just set free, and uh, B uh, B sentenced for three years. And if they both defect, if they both uh, disclose each other, then they just set each of them gets two years in uh, prison. So. Uh, is this a game? Yes, because we have strategy sets. We we have strategy sets. We have uh, we have uh, we have possible action sets for each player, and for every choice of actions, we have payoffs for both the players. And we assume that both players know all the rules, and they know that the other player knows the rules, and uh, so on. So, any questions till this point? Um, I did anyone? Okay. Uh, but, uh, yeah. So, so let's analyze this game. So, uh, what would a rational player do? So, uh, does anyone want to say the answer? Or does anyone know the answer? Like, if you were A, what would you do? You don't know what B is going to do. So, you would always like, deflect. Would... deflect, right? Yeah. 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 We always deflect because we know that no matter what B does, it's always better to deflect. Uh, so, yeah, exactly. Uh, so, no matter uh, what B does. Uh, so winning is seen in terms of your payoff. So you want to maximize your payoff. Uh, what do you want to maximize? Sorry? What do you want to maximize? Your payoff. Uh, so the payoff was the function UI for each other. Uh, so, so, uh, the thing is that no matter what action B chooses, your payoff 
uh, A's payoff will be maximized if she chooses D, right? Suppose uh, B chooses to cooperate. Uh, if A cooperates, then uh, her payoff is minus one. And if A defects, her payoff is zero. And if suppose B chooses to defect, then if A chooses to cooperate, uh, her payoff is minus three. Uh, and if A chooses to defect, her payoff is minus two. So no matter what base does, A is always better off defecting. So A should, like defect should be the uh, logical choice for A. Uh, does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Uh, right. So, so over here we had a strategy for we had a strategy for A, uh, where no matter what the other other people do, uh, it's always better. Like that strategy always has the most optimal outcome for uh, A. So uh, such strategies are called uh, dominant strategies. Uh, there are notions of weakly dominant, strongly dominant, but I won't get into those. Uh, so, but dominant strategies rarely exist in real life. So, if in real life, if multiple players are playing a game, it would never happen that like all the players have a dominant strategy, or even one player has a dominant strategy. So, uh, we need to find a notion of solving the game which is more, uh, which applies to more general games. And the most uh, widely applied notion is that of a uh, Nash equilibrium. So, what is a Nash equilibrium? A uh, Nash equilibrium uh, equilibrium is a uh, choice of strategy for each player. So, I so my strategy sets were S one, S two, and S n. So, I pick a strategy S one star in uh, S one, S two star in S two and uh, SN star in SN such that uh, so such that given that uh, so let's the, let the players be A1, A2, AN so, uh, so so every player is playing optimally taking as given what everyone else is doing so 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 if, uh, if I assume that no other player is going to deviate from their strategy then uh, SI star is the best option for uh, her. So, uh, in other words, uh, SI star uh, is uh, R max SI uh, UI uh, S1 star S2 star S I minus 1 star SI 2. What is R max? Uh, sorry. What is R max? Yeah. So yeah, R max is the uh, is the argument which maximizes this function. So is an argument which maximizes this function. So given that other players are uh, sticking to their role in the Nash equilibrium, the uh, the ith player is playing the optimal. Uh, is uh, the i player is playing the optimal move? But like the player we are trying to play, is he playing optimal or not? The player we are trying to like the player which represents the play, game for us. Like uh, we are uh, uh, trying to find a winning strategy for that player. So does that player also uh, plays optimally, or can he debut from this strategy? Yeah. So. Uh, so the thing is that uh, so think of a Nash equilibrium as a contract between all the players. So let's say this, this players met together somewhere and they uh, and like uh, everyone wrote a contract in which the ice player declared that oh I will play as ice star, right? And then they go back to their uh, okay. home. So does yes. I have uh, yeah? So so does uh, so after signing this contract does I have the uh, incentive to unilaterally? Uh, debate from no, his no. or her strategy. Uh, so, no, unilaterally, no. yeah, yeah. So, 
and and if SI star satisfies this thing, then uh, he or she doesn't have that uh, doesn't have that intent. So yeah, so yeah, so one important point is uh, the one that I mentioned. So everyone knows everyone of this role in the uh, Nash equilibrium. So uh, so uh, this should be noted and. Everyone knows everyone else's role, and everyone knows that everyone knows everyone else's role, and so on. So it's the common knowledge. And then, uh, based on this information, uh, no one will want to unilaterally deviate from their strategy. Right. So let's find like the Nash equilibria for prisoner's dilemma. Uh, so is uh, is c comma c uh, uh let's go back to prisoner's dilemma like c comma c is the best choice c comma c is the best choice but is no, it like option? like uh, we are in an equilibrium that no player has an unilateral incentive so like if a player a says something player b should also say the same or if in the second cases one of the player will have like Suffer three years of prison. Uh, sorry, I didn't get your argument. Uh, are you saying that it's a Nash equilibrium or is it not a Nash equilibrium? Like if uh, both corporate or both deficit, uh, in fact, it is really nice because, the, like in other cases, one at least one of the A and B have to like go through three years of prison, which just gives you a lateral incentive to. One other player. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, in, if they if they both agree on C comma C, like uh, A has the uh, A has the incentive to de deviate and play D, because in that case she will get she will be set free instead of one year of. Then B also has the uh, incentive to unilaterally deviate from uh, his strategy. So, uh, C comma C is not a Nash equilibrium. Uh, Similarly, C comma D is not a Nash equilibrium. Uh, C comma D is not a Nash equilibrium because uh, again, so suppose A plays C and D plays D, so A will again just defect to A has the incentive to defect to D uh, if she assumes that B is going to keep his part of the contract. So that way she gets two years instead of three years. So C comma D is not a Nash equilibrium. Similarly. D comma C is not a Nash equilibrium, but D comma D is a Nash equilibrium because if A plays D and B plays D, so uh, so let's say what happens if A unilaterally deviates from uh, her strategy. So she gets uh, so from minus two her sentence goes to minus three, which is bad. So she won't want she doesn't want to deviate. And similarly, B doesn't want to deviate because from Two, two years in prison, his sentence goes to three years if he uh, deviates and if A doesn't deviate. So no one has the incentive to unilaterally deviate. So D comma D is the Nash equilibrium. Like deviating here would be like just add to the prison years. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So any questions at this point? Good. So, yeah. So, like we, uh, yeah. So, so let's consider a new bin. Uh, rock, paper, scissors. So we know that rock beats paper beats rock, and scissors beats paper, and rock beats scissors. So, uh, so, uh, okay. So, uh. Yeah, so uh, is there a, so let's just write down the payoff matrix for this last example. Uh, for it. So this raw paper, this is a raw paper, this is a, this is a and so 
both play rock then no one wins so zero comma zero a plays rock and b plays paper so uh, a loses and b wins and if a plays rock and b plays paper so uh, this happens uh, a plays paper uh, i think i messed up this one this is zero uh this is paper and this is scissors so this is zero and this is one uh, scissors top beat scissors so uh zero comma one and scissors takes paper so this is one comma uh i guess so air does not exist in that situation sorry yeah. like i guess here does not Exists any less uh, less equilibrium. The player just can uh, deviate according to its unilateral sensitivity. Uh, I'm really sorry, your voice is not clear. Uh, I write in the chat what you're saying. Uh, yeah. So, so, uh, so can A choose like? So, is there a Nash equilibrium where A plays one of rock paper scissors and B plays uh, one of rock paper scissors? No, right? Because uh, because because no matter uh, what you do, so if A plays rock and B plays rock, A will deviate to paper. If if A plays rock, B plays paper, then so there so basically there are. Uh, Yeah, exactly. So, because in uh, any choice uh, x and y, so uh, it cannot happen that x beats y and y beats x. So, any choice, uh, they both have the incentive to deviate. So, uh, is there a so so then uh, what do we do about such games? Uh, so, let's assume that A and B we are allowed to use random strategies. So, uh, so A can, so uh, so A can specify a probability distribution over uh, R P and S, and B can specify a probability distribution over R P and S, and then they both sign a contract that I would abide by my probability distribution, and you would abide by your uh, probability distribution, and each of them wants to maximize their expected payoff. So. Uh, is there a contract? Is there such a contract that they can sign so that no one has the incentive to change their probability uh, distribution? And what are the probability distributions? Uh, anyone wants to take the test? Hello, am I audible now? Sorry, am I audible now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, so, anyone wants to like, even if we just had to take a wild guess, what these probability distributions would be like? Do you understand the uh, statement? Yeah, it would be like a third each, probably. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so the, so, so suppose uh, a randomizes with one CR, uh, one third paper, and one third scissor, and B randomizes with one third rock, one third paper, and one third scissor. So, so can uh, so can A change her probability distribution in a uh, in a in a way that maximizes that that increases the payoff from what she is currently playing? Uh, let's let's just do the computation. It might be a bit annoying, but okay. Uh, so. So let's suppose that. Uh, so let's suppose that A 
could have changed her uh, strategy to some x, y, z with uh, x plus y plus z equals to one. Right. So this is rock. This is paper. This is scissor. So what is the expected payoff for A? So uh, if both of them play rock. It's just uh, it's, so. So if A plays rock, which is with X, uh, she uh, she wins with uh, yeah. So if A plays rock, then she only wins if uh, B plays paper. So wait, no, rock beats scissors. So yeah, if, uh, if if A plays uh, rock, she, she wins only if B plays scissors. So uh, this so uh, so this is x times one by three, and then if uh, A plays Paper her payoff is one only if B plays rock. So again, y into one by three plus uh, z. So scissors into uh, one over three. So this is just x plus y plus z over three. Is just one over three. So so uh, so the point is that uh, so so uh, so a would not benefit if she changes the strategy and uh, so if b just randomizes over rock paper and scissors then uh, a's payoff is guaranteed to be one by three no matter what strategy she uses so she doesn't have the incentive to change the strategy and same thing for b a is playing one third rock one third papers and one third scissors so b doesn't have the uh, incentive to unilaterally change his strategy so uh, would you say that this is a Nash equilibrium? Yes. Yeah. So, so this is these are called mixed strategies Nash equilibrium where the players are allowed to randomize over their strategies, and it turns out that these always exist, and we will prove this actually. So the problem with uh, the previous so the problem with the previous case was that uh, strategy space was not very nice. It was just three points and it was not continuous. But when you are allowed to uh, like randomize over them, then your strategy space becomes very continuous, right? So uh, we'll look at the proof shortly. Uh, yeah, so anyways, uh, so here's, what some mixed strategy Nash equilibrium is. Uh, it's a Nash equilibrium, but players are allowed to use mixed strategies. Uh, and again, the random strategies that everyone agreed upon are common knowledge. So uh, this contract is common knowledge. Uh, yes. So each player only cares about maximizing their expected payoff. And we assume that they will want to maximize their expected of even that means taking potentially infinite risk. So that's usually not true in the real world. You want some trade off between risk and your expected of. But for theoretical analysis, we will assume that the players just want to maximize their uh, expected payoff. Uh, and this is a, and so a game is. Uh, finite if the strategy set for each player is finite. So, uh, so Nash proved this theorem in 1959, I think, that uh, every finite game with uh, continuous payoff has a Nash equilibrium. If we allow for mixed strategy, Nash equilibrium. So, uh, what is a continuous payoff? It's just uh, mean by continuous payoff. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, so uh, continuous payoff is just uh, actually I don't think we even need continuous payoff just because we have a finite strategy set for each player and then we are taking the program. Okay, yeah, so okay, ignore this for uh, so it's just yeah, so every finite game has a Nash equilibrium. Okay, so uh, 
let's say we want to prove this theorem. So, uh, if anyone has any ideas, how we might, I can give a hint in let's say two to three minutes. So, uh, because the proof is very short and very elegant, it's just two to three lines. Uh, can you just if uh, there is no, uh, if they are not going according to an argument, one can just like deviate. And if they are if they are going according to an argument, at the worst possible case, they can just deviate and uh, make personal incentives. But in mixed strategies, like we can consider probability and just try to do by that. Yeah. So why should each of them have a choice of probability for which uh, no one has an like why should there be a choice of probability for it so that it can... for mixed strategies i guess they always have an natural yeah. equilibrium like when they yeah. randomize yeah but why do they have uh, Nash equilibrium when they randomize like if they have some end choices for both, both layers have like end choices and if one chooses n, then other can choose n dash so that they win. So like there are some choice. So there is some like one by k probability of winning for each of them. So like then uh, we can randomize and do the same proof like you gave, taking out payoff for the first player, then the second player. and it would come out to be one by k when they randomize strategies. Uh, what is k? Like one by k is the probability of winning for a player. One by k is the probability of winning for a player. What is the probability over? And what does winning? So the thing is that no player is winning here, right? Everyone just wants to maximize their uh, expected payoffs. It's like, okay. so think about this for let's say one moment and then I can do the end time. Maybe then you can. I, I mean, I think you were kind of thinking in the right direction. Like, consider what happens when players change their strategies to maximize the payoff. Yeah, let's just wait for one minute and if anyone comes up with anything. Just, if, you, if you have any ideas, just tell me. Wasn't there a movie on John Mass? Wasn't there? Was there a movie on Jonas? I guess I have seen it. Like he told Nash to live him in that movie. Oh, uh, uh, what? Like, was, was some movie made on John Nash's life. And he yeah, was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a, yeah, I think it's called The Beautiful Mind. Yes, yes he portrayed Nash to live in a really practical way. Oh, yeah, but, uh, but I, I think that the like the movie's interpretation of national yes, yes. I guess they over exaggerated how we find yeah. it. Yeah. 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 I agree. Yeah. I think that they said something like you should care about maximizing the group's payoffs and not your individual like you should work it's for a group and for your individual, but that, that's not the, uh, yeah. Okay, I think I can uh, give a hint. So, so try to construct a function on some space for which Nash equilibrium is a fixed point, and then we have many theorems which guarantee existence of fixed points. So. And it's pretty intuitive, like, what will Nash equilibrium be the fixed point of? Hmm. 
Okay, does anyone know any fixed point theorems? Like, have you heard of any fixed point theorems? Like, no one? Has anyone heard of the Gower six point theorem? I think it's pretty popular, right? Ah. Okay, then I guess then we can just. I think, like I said, I've not heard about. Uh, the Brower's six point theorem then might be hard to come up with the proof. So, uh, yeah, so let's just go over the proof. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so is anyone still trying or should I just should I, uh, explain the proof? I can, we can wait for two more minutes if anyone is trying and it's not attend. Yeah. yeah, let's just wait till 10 or 4 minutes. Uh, okay, let's go over the proof. Uh, 
so every player can choose a mix strategy right uh, so we have players 1 and uh, and so one has one has a strategy set as one two has a strategy set as two and, and has a strategy set as n and so one can choose a random strategy over s1 so a strategy of ones is can be given by a couple uh, x11 x12 to x1 mod s1 a uh, number of elements in x1 similarly a strategy of player 2 and where these things come to one because they are probabilities uh, so some x one equals one then similarly a strategy of player 2 can be specified by a couple of length mod s2 uh, which is x21 x22 x2 mod s2 and so on uh, x and 1 x and 2 and uh, x and mod s and right so imagine that we take all these strategies and just concatenate them into a big tuple of uh, size mod s1 plus mod s2 plus mod s n and let's just call this let's just call player one strategy as upper uh, index one as upper index to one is this And and the tuple x one one x one two x one s one x two one x two two x two s two just denote this uh, tuple by so it's understood that this uh, actually uh, this actually encodes a this actually encodes a tuple of this length so so consider the space of all of these uh, tuples so. Uh, is it a convex region? Uh, can someone prove that it's a convex region? This whole uh, this whole set it's a it's a subset of uh, R. So, the, uh, does anyone uh, do you guys know the definition of a convex region? I can someone say the definition of a convex region? Can tell what is the definition? Sorry, uh, no. Can you just explain convexity of a set? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I, I will do that. Um, if x comma y is in the set, then a x plus b y for uh, a plus b equal to one will also be. Yeah. Exactly. So. Uh, so let's say you have. Let's just use the next page. Um, and let's just search here. So let's say you have a. Let's say you have a set S, uh, which is a subset of some R M. So, and let's. So S is convex. If. Uh, if for. All v comma w in S. So v and w are vectors, right? Because they uh, are subset of R M. For all v and w in S, uh, lambda v plus mu w is in S. For all for all sorry. Uh, lambda v plus One minus lambda w is in uh, S for all v comma w uh, for all sorry for all uh, for all uh, lambda in zero comma one. So basically, what we are saying is that for uh, any two points v and w in S, the whole line segment joining v and w is also contained in S. So such a set is called a convex set. So now, can you show that the the space of all uh, these space of all these probabilistic strategies form a convex set? Hmm. 
Any idea? Well, like if the sums yeah. are initially one, then even when you take ax plus by, they'd still be one. Or yeah, like... exactly. Yeah, so so if we take the if we take a linear combination of two probability distributions, it's still a probability distribution. If the coefficient sum to one, right? Because probabilities that they must be just positive and sum to one. Yes. So yeah. So, uh, so, so for any two couples, S1, S2, S1, and uh, S1 prime, S2 prime, S1. Some will be like one. Yeah, exactly. And so lambda S1 plus one minus lambda uh, S1 prime will be, will be a probability distribution. And lambda S2 plus one minus lambda S2 prime will be a probability distribution and uh, so on. So, that's the definition of a convex set. So our space is convex uh, and it's compact. So does anyone know the definition of a compact set? Uh, okay, so I think that uh, like I'll just so uh, like just don't. Uh, so the compact basically means that it's finite. So the whole set can be contained in a large sphere and it has all of its boundaries. So uh, let's say if we had a set like this. So let's say if we had the open disk. So we take the unit disk x square plus y square equals one, but we remove all the points on its boundary. So this is not a compact set because it doesn't contain its, like the set doesn't have its boundary. but if we take something uh, which has a boundary and the boundary is contained in, in the set, if we take a solid figure, so that's compact. So uh, the set is compact. So, so I mean, it's kind of intuitive that our space will be compact, right? Because, uh, because let's say all the n tuples that sum to one and are greater than zero, they, uh, they form a, so let's say all the tuples which uh, which satisfy x1 plus uh, x2 plus x3 equals to 1, uh, they form a, form a triangle in the 3D plane. And this definitely has all of its boundaries because, and the boundaries are just when one of the probability is 1 or uh, 0. So that is compact and it's convex. And now we, and so, so what, uh, so what does what is the statement of the Bras fixed point theorem? Uh, so so uh, Bravo. So uh, let S be a compact and convex set. So then every uh, F from S to S has a fixed point. Uh, so, uh, does this statement make sense? I mean, the proof is definitely not intuitive, but uh, does the statement make sense? Every, sorry, every continuous S from uh, S to S has a fixed point. Uh, so in any so every continuous mapping from a compact and convex set to itself must have a fixed point. Uh, that's the Brouwer's fixed point theorem. Uh, so a fixed point is just uh, so. Can so so by fixed point, if uh, it means that even if we map. To something else, it will become the same thing. Yeah, which exactly. is what we so, want in Nash. Yeah. Now, what? Uh, how is that continuous? Well, the mapping f from that thing to that thing. How is the continuous mapping? How is the mapping f from s one s two to s one star s two star? How is that continuous? Yeah, yeah. I will uh, tell you. This. So, uh, so I just write the. Uh,
SQS is going to be missing. Uh, F has a is then Fs have an fixed point like if S is yeah. compatible. Yeah, so a fixed point is just a point which maps to itself. Because it yeah. will be like in some point it will have to like map to itself only. Yeah, so for every continuous function from a compact and convex to itself, there has to be a, a point which maps to itself. Yeah. Uh, so, so we want to construct an F which shows the existence of a Nash equilibrium. So the choice is kind of intuitive. So for every strategy choice S1, S2, Sn might be a mixed strategy choice. Let uh, S1 star, S2 star, Sn star be constructed as follows. So S1 star is the best response of player one, given that the other players are playing S2 to Sn. Then, uh, then S two star is the best response of player two, given that the other players are playing. So, given that one is playing S one, uh, three is playing S three, and n is playing S n, and so on. So, it's like uh, every player knows everyone else's strategy, and then they change their strategy so that it's the uh, best response to the people's strategy, and then they keep on doing that. So. Uh, so a point which is fixed by this is exactly a Nash equilibrium point. And because a set was compact and convex, and this mapping S is continuous. So uh, I will give an outline for the proof of that. So by the Bravo's fixed point theorem, we are done. Uh, so there are, uh, okay, someone was saying something. Is it continuous because uh, the change is always bounded by something uh, yeah exactly so the so uh, it's continuous because let's say uh, so like i can give a very hand wavy argument but like and i think you can just sit down and prove that it's continuous so it's just that is so let's say uh, so let's say so let's say i choose some uh, so let's say i'm play, player one and i have chosen some probability distribution over my strategy player two has chosen some probability distribution and so on till player n. So so if all of these strategies were to just change a little, so then the so if all of the uh, if the strategies taken by the other players were to just change a little bit. So if they just change the probability distribution a little bit, then uh, then I won't have to make a drastic change in my uh, probability distribution to uh, to so to get the so okay so uh, the signal of what I just said so let's let's say I uh, think one strategy would give another strategy for like any other player so I guess then it is continuous like say yeah, exactly S, S N deviates from a continuous point so like since it is a probability distribution I guess then uh, some S K will also deviate and it will be like something very finite and Representable in terms of yeah, some exactly. orientation. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. It's pretty intuitive that F is continuous. Uh, yeah, because the thing is that uh, if if we are if if uh, let's say I'm player player one and let's say there's only two, there are only two players. I'm player one and the other player is player two. So let's say my best response to uh, my best response to S two is uh, my best response to S two is some um, uh, my best response to S2 is some uh, S2 star. Sorry, my best response to uh, my best response to S2 is some S1 star. And let's say uh, player two has another strategy. Let's say it's S2 plus epsilon, where it changes is probability distribution by just a little. So then my best response is then my best response will uh be the my best response will also be also change like a very small manner like i won't like so if the other players change their probability uh, distribution by a little bit then the best response is also change by a little bit and you can uh, make it concrete using tools from topology so because this whole space is compact you can show that every continuous function has to be uniformly continuous and then you can use the uniform continuity to 
show that the arg max set must be continuous as well as in the i think you can use the inverse function for a much but uh, but i mean like the main idea of the proof is this to just uh, visualize the nash equilibrium as a fixed point of uh, function and and the function is just everyone changes the strategy to make it the optimal strategy by looking at everyone else's uh, study and this is why in, even in real life uh, games like over a long period of time the games like usually settle to a nash equilibrium because everyone keep on updating their strategy by looking at everyone else's strategy and then everyone does that and everyone does that again so eventually we reach a nash equilibrium that happens for the many real life situations yeah so any questions till now uh okay good so yeah so next we will uh, look at incomplete information games because thinking of including a nice problem in the piece that which is based on it. so they are uh, they are kind of similar to complete information games but uh, they are different in a subtle manner uh, so so let's say we have two players uh, alice and bob and uh, each of them have two choices football or tennis right so alice is a friendly person but bob may be friendly or hostile and only bob knows whether he is friendly or hostile and alice uh, alice has a prior belief on bob's state that he is friendly with probability half and then he is hostile with probability half right so so the payoff matrix is when bob is friendly and when bob is hostile are these so if bob is friendly so so uh, so so the, the story behind this payoff matrix is as follows that alice uh, alice likes football more than tennis and bob likes tennis more than football and if a player is friendly they would want both of them to play the same game and if they play the same game then uh, for their favorite sport the payoff is 2 and for their next favorite sport the payoff is 1 and if they don't play the same game then the payoff for a friendly player is just 0 but uh, for a hostile player it's the opposite so if they play the same game the payoff for a hostile player is 0 and if they and if they play different games and if the hostile player plays his favorite game then the payoff is 2 and if they play different games and the hostile player plays his least favorite game then the payoff is 1 right so and the thing is only bob knows his true state and alice just has this uh, prior belief on bob's state that he is friendly with half and is not friendly with probability how can but these payoff matrices that what happens if bob is friendly and what happens if bob is hostile and uh, and and the fact that alice has this 50 50% belief these things are common knowledge so even bob knows that alice has this 50 50% uh, belief that he is friendly or hostile and these are the payoff matrices and uh, so on so let's see if there are any pure strategy nash equilibria for this game right so is the setup clear so uh do yes it is okay cool yeah so so let's see what happens so so let's pick a Uh, let's pick a strategy for alice let's say that let's say that alice let's say that uh, let's say that we are assuming at a nash equilibrium exists that uh, alice always plays s uh, so so if, if there is such a nash equilibrium so if bob is friendly then he will definitely play f right so so this Okay, so if Bob is friendly, uh, then 
Okay, good. Uh, so in this case, if Bob is friendly, he will play F. And if Bob is uh, and if Bob is hostile, then he will play T. Right, because if Bob is friendly, then he doesn't want to play T because he will get a payoff of one one even if he plays F. And if Bob is hostile, then he will just play T. And and okay, so so this these are Bob strategies. So is Alice's F optimal given these strategies of uh, Bob? Uh, so so what is so so based on Alice's prior? Uh, so based on Alice's prior, what is her payoff over here? Uh, what is her? Like if Bob is friendly, then she should play football. Uh, yeah, no. Uh, so uh, we are uh, so like we are assuming that yeah. So we are assuming that like let's say there is a Nash equilibrium where Alice plays football. So I constructed Bob's optimal strategy for a Nash equilibrium where Alice plays football in both the cases where Bob is either friendly or hostile. And now we want to uh, cross check that uh, is Alice's football the best strategy for Alice given that Bob is playing this thing uh, in the case where he's friendly or in the case where he's hostile. And if this is true, then this is a Nash equilibrium. Uh, so, so what is Alice's? Payoff when Bob is playing this is and Alice is playing football and what is Alice's payoff when uh, Alice is playing tennis and Bob is playing this. So uh, does anyone want to tell the uh, uh, does anyone want to tell the first one that if Alice is playing football and Bob, and if Bob is playing this strategy where Bob is friendly, he plays football, and if Bob is hostile, he plays tennis. Uh, what is Alice's expected payoff based on her prior? So, what does Alice conceive her payoff to be? And Alice, so only Bob knows his true state. Like Bob is only in one state, either friendly or hostile. But uh, Alice is. He plays table, he plays tennis. He wants to play. Sorry, this is Bob. Like if Alice is playing football, then it would yeah. be really nice for B to be hostile and like tennis. Yeah, so if Alice plays football and if B was hostile, then the best choice for him is tennis, right? Because uh, because if B is hostile, then uh, in tennis uh, uh, in tennis he has a payoff of two and in football. Yeah, it's tennis only because like then. If he wants to play football, it would then incentivize Alice in any way. Uh, it would not, but then, uh, but then, uh, but then that's not optimal for Bob, right? So why would he play football? Yes, like if Bob uh, plays football, then Alice would get a more payoff. So in either of the cases, he should play tennis, right? So you think that even if Bob is friendly, he should. Play tennis. Yes. yes. That's not true, right? Because let's say Bob is friendly, then uh, then if he if Alice is playing football, then uh, if Bob plays football, he gets a payoff of one, and if Bob plays tennis, he gets a payoff of zero. So uh, why would he play tennis if he's friendly? But then Alice also gets a a payoff of two, which is one more than Bob's. It is like advantage of Alice in any way. Sorry? This, but like, Bob doesn't care about Alice's payoff. Bob only cares about his payoff. So that uh, that thing we had established at the very start that uh, every every player just wants to maximize individual payoff. They don't care about other people's payoff. Okay, then I guess it is tennis or football. Both works. Sorry. Then I guess it, playing football would work for Bob because yeah. in any yeah. case, it would like guarantee a payoff. 
Yeah, exactly. So playing football is optimal for Bob if he's friendly and playing tennis is uh, his first choice. So uh, and let's view the world from Alice's viewpoint. So so she knows that uh, her like her state is friendly and if Bob is friendly, he will play football and if Bob is hostile, he will play tennis and both of these things can happen with probability half. So based on Alice's prior knowledge of the world, uh, what is our expected payoff? So if both of them play football, which can happen with probability half, that uh, half into tennis for when Bob is friendly and when Bob is hostile, it's just zero. So it's one. So let's say Alice decides that okay, Bob is playing this strategy when he's friendly and this strategy when he's hostile. So let's say what happens if I change to tennis, right? So uh, if if Alice chooses changes to tennis, and uh, so in the case where Bob is friendly, her payoff is zero, and in the case where uh, Bob is hostile, her payoff is one. So in this case, it's just half into one equals to half. So football is the optimal strategy for Alice. So, uh, so, uh, so, uh, so, uh, so, uh, so uh, a world where uh, Alice plays football and Bob plays football if it's friendly and Bob plays tennis if it's hostile is in a Nash equilibrium. And, and we can, and let's say what happens if we are trying to uh, construct a Nash equilibrium where uh, Alice plays tennis. Uh, so, so, yeah. So, yeah. So let's say we try to construct a Nash equilibrium where. Uh, Alice plays tennis. So, uh, so in this case, uh, if if the Nash equilibrium contract says that Alice will play tennis, so uh, if Bob is friendly, uh, he would prefer playing tennis, right? Because uh, then his uh, Bob is friendly would prefer playing tennis because his payoff is two in that case, and if he plays football, it's uh, zero, and if Bob is hostile, he will prefer playing football, uh, right? So, uh, so let's uh, and then then we come back to Alice and uh, would she want to switch to football given that uh, Bob is playing these the strategies? So, so, uh, so, what is the expected when Alice is playing tennis? Um, so over here it's so when Bob is friendly, it's half into one plus. Uh, when Bob is hostile, it's uh, half into zero. So plus zero, which is half. And what is the expect? Uh, what is the expected payoff when she plays football? When Bob is friendly, it's zero, and Bob is hostile, it's two. So it's half into two equals to one. So so. Uh, Nash equilibrium because like Alice can unilaterally incentivize her choices, so he gets uh, she gets like a nice incentive. Yeah, exactly. So so this thing is not a Nash equilibrium because Alice has the incentive like for to switch to football. We need to have that expected payoff for all of them are the same. Expected payoff for expected so if it was a Nash equilibrium, then we would like have. Expected payoff when Alice plays tennis and expected payoff when Alice plays uh, football would be equal if it was in Nash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, either equal or uh, expected expected payoff when Alice plays football is less than uh, expected payoff when Alice plays tennis. So Alice doesn't have the incentive to switch. But in this case, she does have. So so there's only one Nash equilibrium for this world, which is that. Uh, Alice plays this that Alice plays football and uh, Bob plays football if friendly and Bob plays tennis if hostile. So, uh, so there's an interesting 
uh, observation over here. So suppose that we didn't have this randomness on Bob that suppose Bob was friendly to begin with and Alice knew that Bob is friendly and Alice didn't have this confusion that is Bob friendly or hostile. So, so in that case, let's look at the right way of matrix. So, so in this case, this is the payoff matrix and Alice doesn't have this confusion that Bob is friendly or uh, hostile. So, so in this case, there are two Nash equilibria. So one Nash equilibria is when both agree to play football and one Nash equilibria is when both agree to play tennis. Uh, so, but, uh, so when both agree to play tennis, right? Because if both agree to play tennis, then no one would want to shift because then the payoff would become zero. And both want to play football, then no one would want to shift because then the payoff would become zero. And this tennis, tennis, uh, and this tennis, tennis, uh, Nash equilibrium is favorable for Bob because he has to play tennis and payoff is two. And in this uh, football, football, Nash equilibrium, his uh, payoff is one. So we see that if Alice is confused about whether Bob is hostile or friendly, then uh, we lose this tennis tennis Nash equilibrium. So then the only Nash equilibrium which remains is one in which Alice plays uh, football, right? So it's because Alice has this confusion that is Bob friendly or hostile that she uh, that she uh, that she decides that she only wants to. But in, in the, 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 that for a Nash equilibrium to exist, Alice must be playing football, like she cannot play tennis. So, so these are the kind of things that can happen when there's a, uh, when there's like, when some players have some information private and other players have a prior distribution of beliefs over that information. So games behave very differently as compared to when everyone knows all, all the private information with uh, like exactly like this one probability one that it is this thing or uh, the other. So, so that bring, brings us to, uh, so, so any questions still here? Yeah. No. Okay, nice. Um, yeah, so uh, that brings us to incomplete information game. Uh, so, an incomplete information game has n players one to n. And so each player i has a set of different types that that player can be in. And so for example, the uh, the set of types that Bob could be in was friendly and hostile. And for Alice, the type set was just friendly. And every player also has a strategy set S i, right? So no one knows. Uh, no one knows the other player's type, and no one knows what, like, no, everyone, but everyone knows everyone else's strategy set. So, an outcome is consists of a strategy for each player and a type for each player. So, so, uh, yeah, so an outcome, so during the outcome, it's revealed that, oh, this player had this type and is using this strategy. And then, uh, payoff function uh, is from this space of outcomes, which consists of a strategy and a type for each player, two real numbers. And these payoff functions are common knowledge that everyone knows what uh, i's payoff function is given that this, uh, given everyone's types and, uh, yeah, given everyone's types and strategies. Right, and so now we get to the part which distinguishes uh, it from complete information game. So, uh, so, so the only information that's private to every player here is their type, and uh, all other information is public. That it's common knowledge. So, so, uh, so only player I knows his or her type, and every other player has a uh, has a prior belief about that. Uh, what is player I's state? So, in general, so let's look at the world from player I's. Let's, say let's, uh, let's look at the world from player one's perspective. So, so there's this parent, they call it the parent distribution or like a prior distribution phi over all possible types. Um, so, 
let's look at the world from player one's viewpoint so player one knows uh, player one knows what state he is in and then he can use uh, he can he can use conditional uh, probabilities to determine the distribution uh, determine the distribution over the uh, determine the distribution over the types of all other players so he can also compute things like what is the probability that player 3 is in this type given that this player 2 is in this type and uh, what is uh, and what is the probability that player 4 is in this type given player 3 is in this type and player 2 is in this type so uh, yeah exactly uh, yeah uh, yeah the next theorem is that uh, nash equilibrium exists so we will define a nash equilibrium for incomplete information games and then the proof is actually left as a homework because it's quite similar to the existence of Nash equilibrium. We can discuss it in the next class. I think there's one more class. This uh, theta and theta n just adds to that pure function and like we can relate the proof now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And so, like if yeah. someone deviates from the personality, we can just like have the same. Sorry. Then, like we would uh, do in the end, for six point by doing like this pair function is like compact, compact and convex. Then we can, if we can prove that it is, it has a fixed point, then we would easily suffice that it has a match equilibrium. Yeah, exactly. So you would have to like construct this uh, space where you want to fix, find a fixed point more carefully, and then. Uh, you can just use the bar six point theorem. So, uh, as if that as a homework one, and then we can discuss it in the next lecture. So, uh, so what does a player want to maximize? So, uh, player wants to maximize. Like, so, player can be in any type, and she knows her type. So, no matter what type the player is, in the player uh, has a prior distribution over the states of all other players, and she wants to maximize her expected payoff uh, according to her own prior over the states of these other different players. So, so that's what every player wants to maximize. And uh, so what is the Bayesian uh, Nash equilibrium? So uh, Bayesian uh, Nash equilibrium is just a, so Bayesian Nash equilibrium is just a choice of a, so, so uh, and players can use random strategies even here, right? So, and players can still use uh, the, depending on their type, they can use random strategies over the strategies that, strategies that is common knowledge. And so, so yeah, so, uh, so Bayesian Nash equilibrium is, so remember that in Nash equilibrium, uh, we were giving for each player I uh, strategy, uh, a, strat a probabilistic strategy on uh, SI, right? So in Nash equilibrium, we are giving for uh, each I, uh, Probabilistic strategy on uh, SI. So, uh, in a Bayesian Nash equilibrium, we just give for each I and each possible type of I, we give a probabilistic strategy on SI. So, it's very similar to a uh, Nash equilibrium. So, 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 just for a choice of mixed strategy for each type of uh, each player. And and this choice of so everyone again like agrees to a contract uh, for this for this choice of so everyone goes and then agrees for a contract where they where the evidence is to play one oh if you are this of this type you should play this mixed strategy if you are of this type you should play this mixed strategy and uh, so on and again this contract is such that no matter what type a player is in uh, so depending on a player's type she can have a different prior uh knowledge about the state of other players so no matter which type of player uh, is in he or she doesn't have the uh, incentive to unilaterally deviate from her assigned strategy given for that type so that's just the definition of a uh, bayesian nash equilibrium um yeah and yeah and uh, again the same thing that these FIs are 
So these FIs are just the assignment of a mixed strategy for each type of each player. And again, these are common knowledge, like everyone signed a contract about it. And the only private information that a player has is this type. And other players have a prior belief about this type. And people want to maximize their payoff uh, given their prior belief. So, uh, so, uh, so there's this theorem that a Bayesian Nash equilibrium always exists if uh, all strategy sets are finite and every player has a finite number of types. So proof for this is quite similar to proof for this is quite similar to uh, the proof of this is quite similar to the existence of Nash equilibrium. So try it as a homework and then we can discuss it in the next class and uh, and then in the Next class, I, I will include a problem in the preset where uh, you show the existence of a Bayesian Nash equilibrium for uh, for a for a uh, for a strategy uh, for a for a game where the strategy set is not where the type set is not finite, but the type set is like the interval zero comma one. So I will include one or two examples, uh, and then there was a uh, like an application on like on some social media algorithm type of problem like but I think I'll just include this in the problem like so yeah I think this is what I had for today so I will send the problems that my just like the end of day today and then we can just discuss that in the next lecture like game is a very wide topic so I just wanted to uh, Cover some focus things, and then I can uh, give you references if you're interested in reading more. So, any questions? Like, I think there are five to ten minutes left, so I use those for questions. Uh, did did everyone understand everything? Like, there are any doubts, anything at all, just be free to ask. Maybe. Can you try to some, uh, indulge some global approach in these games? Is there some global approach? In, yeah, so a global approach would be, for example, the dominant strategy. Yeah, as, uh, we can just spread expected value as an expected payoff here. And then do like in which, in which, uh, which section? Like we can just try to involve some global ideas and probability distribution to like get uh, get some forms of the, for a strategy for, for a prob uh, some form of an expected payoff and like just try to get the strategy directly without brute forcing. Uh, without brute forcing what? Without brute forcing the payoff case, like if Alice plays football, Alice plays tennis. In yeah. So can you try to just automate it like we just build a function and that function like gives out the strategy? I think, yeah, I guess you can uh, do that. I'd like, so one more, so like one more analysis that we can do here is like, uh, do they have the Asian national equilibrium strategies where they use probabilistic strategies? So for that, we can just uh, involve four variables x, y, z, and w, then we can construct the expected payoff function. Well, where the expectation is taken over both the mixed strategy and the prior belief of each player and then we can uh, just look at those functions and then we can uh, we can get the answers x y z w so that those will also include the pure strategies and any mixed strategies if there are so yeah does that answer the question or what let's all try to indulge globally more yeah yeah yeah. Uh, any other questions? Do you have anything else to say? 
and uh, yeah, if we can, I guess anyone comes up with any questions in the next two to three minutes, then I can answer those. Otherwise, I'll just share this slides on the there's a Discord channel for game theory, right? So I'll share these slides over there, and I also uh, put the problems uh, over there. So you can try to attend those by the next lecture. I think that tomorrow probably same time. Uh, yes, tomorrow and, is the session again on this yeah, day. Yeah. yeah. So we'll spend like most of the time tomorrow just discussing those problems, I guess. And I'll leave you with some references at the end. Um, yeah, I guess that's it from my side. So yeah, if there are no questions, then let's call it a day, I guess. Uh, I'll share this slides in the Discord server. Okay, so no more questions, right? Uh, so, okay. See you tomorrow. Bye. Uh, bye. 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 Thank you for taking this session, though.